Muslims in Norway are now establishing a masjid and dawah center to enhance the Norwegian dawah. If you donate to this cause, you will inshallah reap the rewards of thousands of Muslims coming back to Islam and many of those who become du'at and invite to Islam. So click the link and donate now and share the video for extra reward. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm here with Big G and A plus. Yes. Okay. Yes. A plus, A plus Big like Z. That. And here as well, Big H, of course, with you guys. Where is he? <laughs> <laughs> Today we're gonna to be reacting to a video which I came across which has many, many views. Uh, about seven million actually. And I was surprised I didn't come across this video or that no one sent it to me before. I think we were all surprised actually, because yeah. this video was quite interesting. It is actually, yeah. Not least because there was actually a Muslim representative. Okay, uh, did, they, did, did she represent? Exactly, this is the question, right? There was a Muslim woman there, who at least looked like a Muslim, but did not sound like one, uh, who was answering these questions. And the way this, this program works as Spectrum is that they'd ask these questions and then they would stand on a spectrum, okay, on where they agree or to what extent they agree mm -hmm. and or disagree. And so there are, th there are a few questions here that were asked, I think, which are pertinent to the public discourse, mm. which we want to react to. So let's, let's look at the first thing that I, I, th I felt was um, pretty important. I actually don't want kids, but if I were to decide to do that, I would want them to, to grow up in that environment where there's no difference between you two. You don't have like a curfew that she doesn't have or vice versa. So uh, Hijab, what do you think about that? Because that's something a bit, you know, I would say, well, close to all of our hearts, but, you know, to see a Muslim woman um, saying what she said or moving to where she moved, was it the right move? No, I don't. I, I don't think it was the right move, but um, we can employ Hosn of Dhan here or the thinking good, because yeah. at this point in time, you can see that generically, I mean, when you're raising boys and girls, there are not that many differences mm. in the way that you're going to raise both of them. And in fact, there are many rules in Islam which mm. indicate that you should be equal in gifts and, and time spent. Yeah and your love that you have for both boys and girls. So yeah. gen gen generically, I mean, uh, I don't think it's wrong. However, there are obviously differences, especially as boys and girls become closer to puberty and become closer to adulthood. So uh, <coughs> that's what I would say. Like for, for instance, a, a boy now who's becoming a man has to start thinking about protection, the protective role that they would mm. have. This is something we believe in. We believe that, for example, if I have a boy, a son and a daughter, Knowing that the son has advantages which are anatomical in nature, clearly you would you would guide the son to be protective of over the daughter in a way mm. that you wouldn't tell the daughter to be protective over the son. I don't know how exactly. to what extent you agree with uh, with that. No, exactly. Even biologically, that follows. You know, I've had a discussion with feminists in the past as well. You know, it's 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 sad. You know, for them to deny their own biology. You know, and we're not talking about exceptions. They'll come and say, "Oh, but if, what if there's a woman that's a kickboxer?" We're not talking about that. You know, mm. it's it's the duty of the male. And like Allah says, men are the maintainers and protectors of women. Period. If the one who created me said that, there's, there's nothing else that needs to be done. That's what I was saying without delving in too much. Mm -hmm. What about you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say that if, if I was to push back and play devil's advocate, I would say, okay, but here we're talking about kids. Should you not be bringing them all up as protectors? Should they not all be exposed to that? No, what is defined as protecting though? No, but would you look firstly uh, if I have a daughter and I have a son, I will both tell them both how to protect themselves. Yeah. And I'm sure even your kids, you send them to be BJJ, you know. So, d d uh, even though you're uh, against this, but in your life, you practice that you take your daughter and your son to BJJ. Mm. However, let's be real here that when they grow up, yeah, that we need to be real with them and tell them, you know, and I'm sure they would realize that with their own biology, they'll understand that a man is tend to be more stronger and their brother is there to protect you. you know, why should we be afraid of that? That's why I would say to that. And, and you know, on this point, you know, I take my child to, I would do, we do everything with like in terms of self defense. My two, I've got two daughters, mm. uh, as you know. But the, the thing is, I do that now when she's very young and prepubescent, and yeah. the same thing with my son. Yeah. But the moment puberty kicks in, mm. I mean, people don't realize the effect of testosterone. T when testosterone mm. comes into the picture, I mean, a game changer. It, it actually increases muscle mass by up to 50%. Oh, wow. 50 0 percent. Yeah. So now, do you know, this that is very interesting. <laughs> 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 you see children, right? Mm. When they grow older, yeah. and you see how, like, for example, girls versus boys bef mm. before the pubescent stage. Yeah. Girls can sometimes really dominate boys because they they don't there's no 
like uh, testosterone advantage and these kind yeah, of things. Yeah. You see that very, it's very often, mm. um, very common. Mm. But then when, when puberty hits, mm. that's no longer a question. Yeah, I, remember, I remember going to a boxing club when mm. I was younger. I'm not going to mention a club, but one of the top female boxers mm. you know, in the UK, actually, yeah. who represented GB in the, uh, on the Olympics. Okay. When I think the first year they had female boxing. Mm. Yeah. She was basically sparring. She was a woman. She was sparring with the 14-year-old boys. Yeah. There were 13, 14 year olds, year eights and year nines. Yeah. She, th- it would be inconceivable to mm. put her in with, you know, a 21 year old or something like mm. that, that, who's her weight or equal weight, mm. because the advantages are so well described and everyone knows it in, in that industry mm. that it would be so disadvantageous for them. Okay, should we move on to the next one? Because yeah. I think here we're assuming the best. second that I agree with that statement but I feel like the heavy restrictions that are placed on it by our government just dictating what we can do with our bodies is really infuriating and then seeing people who have kids and resent it for the rest of their lives and raising children that they never wanted it's it's frustrating and so do you think that those parents that are struggling with raising their children that they didn't have the option for adoption or other ways it depends like for a lot of cultures adoption is not okay so as you guys saw she was strongly agreeing with abortion but we know this just to make this clear that according to the the schools of thought in islamic uh, jurisprudence Mm. three out of four schools say that after 120 days i mean up to 120 days you can abort in certain circumstances not not all circumstances and one school of thought says 40 days Mm. it's inconceivable to think that after 120 days Mm. that a muslim can believe in something referred to as late stage terminal uh, abortion, mm. which is, uh, as you know, in, in, in America, in different parts of the Western world and different parts of the world, mm. can go up to six months, which if wow. you've ever seen a child, you, a child can survive mm. in six months. Gosh. The way they take, and we couldn't even put this like as a picture of, uh, you know, a video, how they actually extract and cut up a baby that's five months old, literally a viable child a viable when i say viable i'm talking about living it has a pulse it has a heart it has organs it has a brain it can it can it has a nervous system Mm. you kill this child uh, Mm. practically Mm. you're saying that a woman should have the right to do this on what grounds do you think this is commensurate with the islamic teaching to be honest i believe it's 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 just based on nothing no rationale no logic it's yes. just basically an insecure i'd see yes. an insecure yes. muslim woman yeah. who's dominated um, yes. you yeah. know with ideologically yes. in the west yes. and she's just basically hmm. la- like she's just saying you know i'm here do whatever you like with me exactly. and and I, wherever you go i'm going to follow you exactly. that's what i see because there is no way if i sat that sister down and i said do you genuinely believe this she would say to me i, I hope she would say to me no like I'm, i don't even know if i can say that she would say no and i hope she would say no but the thing is here, how could you, can you imagine this sister, if she's going to watch this, I don't know if you have kids, imagine you have a child, and I want you to look at that child, after you, after you look at that child, I want you to look at that child and say, you know what, your sibling, imagine bro, they were ripped piece by piece, Good point. piece by piece, Good because point. we need to put this into perspective, yeah. bro. when you come here and say, that's oh right. that's wrong, no, 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 look at your child and yeah. say, and if you did ever do abortion, may Allah forgive you and repent, look at your child and say, one of your siblings, that died or killed not died killed and bit by limb limb by limb and we ripped him into pieces you're to- not and talking phone, about phone where? In, you're, in you're not talking about early abortion nah, after 40 days nah, 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 to- nah, we nah. are talking about five um, months yes but she's months. she's saying totally agree brother yeah, yeah, and the yeah, question is yeah. very clear she didn't so agree. Yep. yes yep. so limb by limb you've literally killed your own child mm. you've killed your own child so mm. you should get, um, bring up a child and say this is what i did to your sibling would you do that? Ah, bro, come on, when when come the on, man. the Quran states that when mm. the child, the the female, interestingly, yeah. spe- female infanticide yeah, yeah. that the Quran is against, when the female child is, uh, yeah. says, for what, for what sin did I, what did you kill me for? Yes, yes, on that Yom Qiyamah, yeah. It's absolutely disgusting. Yeah, yeah, bro. yeah. So for, for what? For what? Disgusting. For what? For what did you kill me for? For feminism? Exactly. No, no, no. What did you kill me for? Can you imagine on the day of judgment? What did you kill me for? Yeah. Uh, for uh, an ideology, uh, uh, because because I was insecure. Yeah. I think what's interesting here is the the slogan they use is my body, my choice. But it's brother, not your body. It's not your body. Uh, what yeah. kind of nonsense is this? It's but my body. One bro- one brother made a very good choice. Uh, not choice. He made a very good point, and he said that 
puts the whole kind of impetus on the per- person themselves mm. but they're not the only one that's responsible or affected by that decision exactly that's right what about the choice of the father what about the choice of the See, grandfather exactly. no, what about the choice of the family these sorts of things it's like you mentioned about human rights it's all about what you owed and not what you owe and that's one of the issues that we have with this that's point number one point number two even uh, ronaldo himself he was one of the children and he mentions this in his documentary that he was supposed to be aborted he was uh, supposed to be gone but if we didn't have ronaldo then we wouldn't have such a a um, a football star that people look up to because mm. he doesn't have tattoos he mm. doesn't drink alcohol you know he looks after his family and and somebody that is i'm not saying the best of role models but yeah. i'm saying he's better than most yeah. so these two things i think uh, are, are, are very important things to uh, reflect about but you you wanted to say something about my body and my choice i can forget this my body my choice no so th- we we are created by allah and we belong to allah simple as that yeah there's no again it's, it's a matter of aqidah bro and having tawakkul on allah because when you're aborting this child again it's a lack of tawakkul like because if you are thinking is I can't look after them. Okay, Allah says in the Quran, He is the one that provides. Wallahi, all these issues linked to Tawheed and it's Tawakkul, mainly Tawakkul. What's not tawakkul trusting. Having are... trust in mm. Allah, mm. knowing that He's the creator that created the heavens and the earth, that He can provide for you. It's not deep. Wallahi, mm. it's an insult. Man, can you imagine the one who created the heavens? Do you believe in Him? Yeah, I do. But do you believe He can provide for you? Uh, what an insult. What an insult. There's, there's also another thing that needs to be understood here. They might say, you know what, she's just a, she's just a woman, you know, leave her alone, blah, blah, blah. Look, the thing is, there's two types of Muslims that can go on a show like that. One, without hijab, that people will assume certain things. Let's face it, we do live in a society where we judge by what's apparent. Whether it's right, right or whether it's wrong, if somebody sees a hijabi woman on there and they're not that exposed to Islam, they will assume that that is the orthodox opinion of islam so you're saying that there is a cut-off age and you're saying three months now you could argue maybe she knew that maybe she didn't know that four, but with four months four months but with all due respect like if she didn't know that and she knows she's the only hijabi on that show it's a big channel she has a responsibility to say and re- represent her religion because she's wearing the attire if you're wearing the attire of a policewoman and then somebody asks you law and yeah. you get the law wrong you can't say hey don't judge me by the way i look yeah, yeah, so yeah. she's she is responsible and she does need to be sensible about these things even if you make the argument that maybe it was cut out maybe this maybe that she should you know ensure that her religion I is represented you, well i think with her the thing is what is most despicable about her uh, kind of uh, por- portrayal of islam or lack thereof actually to be honest with you is the fact that she's being so inconsistent with her worldview. Look, she's representing Islam through her attire, like you've mentioned, and she's meant to represent a Muslim voice on the show. Mm. Yet, she, all she's doing is spouting left-wing propaganda, second-wave feminism. This is not a representation of what Muslims believe. And she's not self-consistent with Islam. She's trying to bring two opposing ideologies together, second-wave feminism and Islam. And it's just looking wrong. Uh, first of all, I want to sh- I want to show one thing. Okay, they asked a question, which is that do they believe that the world would be a better place if it's run by women? Yeah, and look where she stands on the on there. She doesn't have a strong stance, but look where she stands as well. But then look at the contribution. I want to focus on the contribution of the white feminist, white feminist, because I actually think it was a very good contribution from within her own paradigm. How is that any different than saying, I believe that the world would be better if it were run by men? Like, if we're going to say that on this token, we get that on that token, that's not even balanced at all. Now, if you compare that with the Muslim's contribution, okay, let's see what the Muslim has to say and then and then comment on all of it. That's why I, I chose yeah. this one, too, because I don't think it should be one, one or the one. other. I definitely yeah. think that um, when it's only man run, they're missing the rest of society. You right. can't really operate the world or any government or leadership if you're not embracing the second half of society. So I, f- for me, looking at the white feminist, she, to be honest, is way more self-consistent with her ideology than the Muslim who's attempting to be a feminist, who really is a, who, who's sacrificing her religion, is contradictory in her stances, because this woman, at least, she's self-consistent. She realizes that actually if feminism is an egalitarian discourse, especially if it's liberal feminism, then it should ins- ensure that people have freedom of choice and, and, she, she, and also freedom and equal opportunities. And she starts to realize, okay, this is how it should play out if we are to be self-consistent. The Muslim, 
she has no care to try and represent uh, consistency or be consistent in any way. So she's just saying, yeah, it would actually be better if it's run by uh, women. But the problem is, of course, that Islam gives rights to men that it doesn't give to women. It gives responsibilities as well to men that it does not give to women. Um, not least, of course, the fact that the man is meant to be the manager of the household. That men are maintainers and protectors of women but because of what he gave one over the other. And the word ta, which is obedience, you know, from men to women, uh, women to men in the, ma in the in the household is not something which is just relegated to the hadith literature. Mm -hmm. It's actually in 434 itself, in the Quran itself. Fa in if they obey you, meaning this is the normative state. The point is, if you're saying that the world will be better run by women, what is your stance on men being leaders of every household? Because men being lead on an aggregate level, this would mean that what you want is an inverse of what's going on, which is completely anti-Islamic. What do you guys think? I think the, uh, an interesting parallel you can draw is with regards to approximately 124,000 prophets that have come and all of them being male and leaders, leaders of the religion, exactly. imams, the leaders religion, yeah. of uh, every single congregational prayer that's valid within the paradigm of Islam being a male figure. Mm. What would be your answer with regards to that? So it does seem contradictory to an Islamic point of view. I think she could have worded it better. Wallahu alam if she actually meant this. But it doesn't seem like she's somebody that is uh, committed. committed, but I mean representative of Orthodox Islam. Of course not. Uh, the thing is, she, she, to be quite honest with you, she's sold her soul to the left-wing ideologies. And for all intents and purposes, this could lead to major kufr. That takes someone out of the fold of Islam. And we have to just call the a spade a spade. I'm not calling her a kafir. Although what she's, what she's representing is kufr akbar, a major kufr. And most of the positions or the implied entailments of her position, uh, what we need to realize is that these positions are unacceptable Islamically. That's as simple as really as simple as that. These positions are unacceptable Islamically. You need to realize that this is another is another way of life. It's another ideology. You can call it if you like another religion. Yeah. Second wave feminism is like another religion that has different presuppositions, different assumptions, different hierarchies, different priorities. You cannot maintain. An Islamic, committed Islamic point of view, and this at the same time, you will be cognitively dissonant, which is a psychological disorder. Or you'll be a liar to yourself and to all those around you. Or you'll be a clandestine apostate, someone who doesn't actually, a munafiq, a munafiq, someone who doesn't actually believe in Islam, so, uh, but just pretends to be Muslim for social and cultural uh, reasons. And may Allah protect us and our people from this because at the end of the day we're seeing more and more of these <coughs> kinds of figures come up yeah. and they're trying to normalize it but there is no space for that in the Islamic environment at all. Do you agree? Yeah, of course. You know, we're happy with our religion. You know, we're pleased with our Lord. You know, it's as simple as that, man. Let's just get away with these insecurities. You know, at mm. the end of the day, it's as simple yeah. as that. Well, that's, where it, that's where it stems from. We don't yeah. understand. A lack of tawheed, not knowing your religion. It's true. And then what happens is then you become like a... Is it what a leaf that you know wherever the wind blows you? You know mm. you're you're wherever. Where feminism? Oh, I'm a feminist. Yeah. That's what it boils down to, guys. You know, mm. and that's where the root of the problem is. Be proud. Mm. Be happy. You know, if you see it, one phenomena is Islam has all these regulations and laws and stuff in place, which is totally opposing to the liberal view. But thousands of people come to Islam because the thing is, when you're true to yourself, like if I you know once I I spent three years looking into different religions, bro. Once I established Islam is the truth, I knew. I knew my dad, my family, my society is going to shun me. Yeah, bro. If I had, if I, the last thing I should have done was accept Islam. The last thing I should have done. But it's the truth, bro. I can't lie to myself. And if it's the truth, I have to stand by it. And when I say I, 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 it's just from Allah. I'm not saying I do something personal. It's with Allah's guidance. But what I'm saying is, man, be proud of your religion, man. This is it damn hard? Mm. You're there trying to be an advocate for feminism, and they're rejecting you, man. They're throwing you. That woman came and just, you know, dismissed you. Mm -hmm. You know. Be firm with your religion. Have tawakkul in Allah. Trust in Allah. Build that connection with Him. You don't need feminism and all these schisms. That's what I would say. Absolutely, bro. Anything you want to say, Zishan, on that, man? Okay. Oh, oh, oh no. Right. Oh, one, no. Second, one second. One oh, second. No. Oh, no. Oh, okay. Oh, no. yeah. Adjust his cap, please. Yeah? Adjust his cap. <laughs> I told you, adjust his cap. <laughs> <laughs> Just one small thought comes to mind, which yeah. is what a scholar said that back in the days we had masjids. Mm. Mosques mm. that were unbaked, they were made from unbaked clay. Mm. 
Yeah, but the people that emerged from them oh, were baked. This is going to be a good one. This is going to be a good one for the fit. But ooh, carry on. They carry were on. baked. Ooh. But today the masjids are baked, but the people that emerge from the masjids are unbaked. Ooh. Wow. Okay. So I mean, we although we we have wow. step up your game. we wow. <laughs> although yeah, we have okay. like billions, <laughs> one point eight billion Muslims, yeah. but oh, if we only had three hundred and thirteen with the caliber of, exactly. of Badr, exactly. today we'd be exactly. on a different plane. Exactly. So we need to take a leaf from these Muslims, read the Sira, the history, and 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 go and take the positives mm. from that time mm. and one of the positives that we've highlighted is being confident in your religion and number two having knowledge of your religion mm. and becoming people of substance and people of action exactly and what you said there for example the, there's a hadith of the prophet ﷺ which mentions this that on that day of the prophet ﷺ said to the companions you're going to be vast in number yeah. you know and um, you're going to be, ghuthaq, ghuthaq yes. sale. You're gonna yes. be like rubbish yes but it's going to be like the foam of the sea the foam, yeah, yeah? Mm. and that and why it's very interesting because that's what the hadith ends there he actually says because and he says why mm. he says because allah the will, the, 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 yes it will put mm. the love of the dunya and fear of death and that's exactly mm. why would someone fear of death we all did Aisha did and had um, told the Prophet Sallam, like I'm scared of death it's not about that it's not that you don't want to meet Allah it's that you're attached to the dunya you don't want to die because you're like no no I want to stay here Aki if you know Allah has promised you something better we all scared of death mm. but to at least be firm and be like you know it is, it is going to be happy but you've attached yourself to the dunya so much and, and you know what yeah. it might it might have been death in those days but nowadays yeah, it might be yeah. death socially yeah, yeah, you're, yeah, you're yeah, afraid yeah. of of dying socially yeah, really. being being your soul your soul is dead bro yeah yeah, yeah. being being uh, unaccepted by society or accepted by society is what so drives you to yeah. selling your religion i mean mm. people fear that and the prophet muhammad sallallahu mm. alaihi wasallam said that, you know that islam bada gharibaan wa sayauda gharibaan that it started strange and it will come back to being strange yeah. and he said Fatuba al so glad tidings to the strangers and this is inshallah us Jazakumullahu khairan wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Muslims in Norway are now establishing a masjid and dawah center to enhance the Norwegian dawah. If you donate to this cause, you will inshallah reap the rewards of thousands of Muslims coming back to Islam and many of those who become du'at and invite to Islam. So click the link and donate now and share the video for extra rewards.